the hundreds of books used in Mesoamerica before the Spanish conquest, the oldest one we have is the Dresden Codex. It is one of four Mayan codices, books used for divination, rituals, and mapping out celestial objects. The most important one of these, of course, being the Dresden Codex. The history of the Dresden Codex is vast, but the important thing to remember is that in 1945, during the bombing of Dresden, it was pretty heavily damaged. This is why modern scholars rely on the work of people like Ernst Forstemann and Paul Schellis, since they actually got to study the Codex before all the damage. Although the Dresden Codex is much more than mere mythology or numerology, it also holds the key to understanding the post-classic view of astronomy. It's 74 pages of awesomeness, omitting the four blank ones, of course. So I suggest we get right into it. Before we delve into it though, we also have to talk about the Maya calendar. All that 2012 bullshit aside, there are actually three different ways to read it, and we're going to have to talk about all of them. The first thing we should discuss is the Hob calendar. This is their 365 day calendar year. It contains 18 months, or winals, each comprised of 20 days, or kins. But they also have one winal at the end of the year comprised of 5 days to make up the 365 days. The weird thing about their calendar is that it starts at zero, so the first of the winal, or the first of the month, would be something like zero pop, while the second of the month would be something like one pop. They also have a sacred calendar called the Tolkien calendar. This one's a little weird to say the least. It has a cycle of 13 days locked with a cycle of 20 unique day names. So on their sacred calendar, you have a total of 260 days. So an example would be something like it going from 4 Akbal to 5 Khan. And this cycle doesn't repeat until 260 days have passed, making up every single combination of the calendar. Put these together and you have your calendar round. Three interlocking cycles creating a date, like 3 Manique, 14 Pulp, and 4 Lamat, 15 Pulp, and so on. And this round doesn't repeat until 52 years have passed. That's why in the Maya tradition, 52 is a very special age. You receive some sort of cosmic wisdom at that age. The third way of telling time is what we call the long count. Kind of like Roman numerals or an abacus, the long count acts the same way, but it has base 20 instead of base 10. You have your kins, or your days, followed by your winals, or your months. Then your tunes, and those make up about 360 days. Then you have a place for your katunes, periods of 20 years, followed by your baktunes, and 20 cocktoons make a boktoon, or 144,000 days. And so on with picktoons, 20 boktoons, and kalabaktoons, or 20 picktoons. So if you're trying to say something happened 1,034 days ago, it would be written 2 15 14. Two tunes, 15 winals, and 14 kins. 1,034 days. But when it comes to the full calendar, just like we here in America base our calendar on the birth of Christ, they base their calendar on a mythical creation date. And that creation date we have traced back to 314 BC, August 11th. Gotta start somewhere, right? December 21st, 2012 was actually the end of another cycle. It is when the long count date from the creation was 13 But just like Y2K, we just kept on going. My birthday, for example, is June 16th, 1994. And the long count date would look something like this. 12, 19, 1, 3, 17. April 1st, 2017, for example, would be 13, 0, 4, 6, 2. 6, ik, 0, pop, as its full Mayan date. Now that we have that part out of the way, we can delve deep into the Dresden Codex. Its 74 pages have been mixed and matched quite a bit. So when I talk about the Venus table, I'll be talking about pages 24 to 29 instead of 24, 46 through 50 for all you scholarly types out there. 
And for all you non-scholarly types, well, stick around, we'll get to it. So the first 23 pages of the Dresden Codex are almanacs, or important dates. They use these for rituals and divinations. They attribute things like weaving or childbearing to gods in certain dates. The day you choose to do a certain thing would be one in which the thing you want to do would result in a good outcome instead of a bad outcome. It's kind of like a Maya version of tarot readings. For example, if we consult the fourth almanac on page 26, it tells us that weaving on 6 Lamot would result in a good outcome, but if you chose to weave on 11 Ix, it would result in a bad outcome. And each of these almanacs had a cycle of 260 days, except for two of them. So you could do things or not do things depending on a wide range of dates. If you were looking to plant something on Wanaha, you would have great results. But if you planted something on, say, 6 Kib, you would have bad results. So choose wisely. Pages 16 to 23, however, are a little bit different. They are what we call the Moon Goddess pages, because the Moon Goddess appears so many times in them. Out of her 58 appearances in these almanacs, all but four of them are in these six pages. She's portrayed as the only truly neutral deity. All the other ones are pretty clearly positive or pretty clearly negative. If we consult Almanac 52 on pages 22 and 23, conceiving a child would be good on 13 Monique and bad on 2 Ix. Now onto the most amazing part of this whole thing, pages 24 to 29, the legendary Venus table. To preface this, we're gonna have to learn some terms, specifically the difference between a sidereal period and a synodic period. In astronomy, a sidereal period is the time it takes for a celestial object to make its cycle and appear in the same place in the sky relative to the stars. A synodic period is the same thing, but in relation to the sun. A good example would be the orbit of the moon. As the moon goes around the earth, the earth also orbits the sun. As a rough sketch, let's take this picture. It shows the earth, the moon, the sun, and the stars in the background. On one given night, we see the moon at some position relative to the stars. Once the moon goes around again and appears at the same place relative to the stars, we call that its sidereal period. For the moon, this would be 27.3 days. Before, we could also measure its position relative to the sun, and for the moon to appear in the same relative position again, it needs 2.2 more days, and that's a synodic period meaning the moon's synodic period is 29.5 days. We should also discuss conjunctions. Unlike grammar, conjunctions in astronomy are just more interesting by nature. A conjunction happens when two celestial objects have the same right ascension in the sky. When we look at the Dresden Codex, it highlights all of these in pretty astounding accuracy. One of the early researchers, John Teeple, found that a sequence of four unconventional time intervals on page 24 of the manuscript actually served as corrections to the 584-day synodic period of Venus. These intervals suggested that Mayan astronomers kept track of the difference between their calendric progression based on a Venus round of 584 days and the 583.92-day synodic period of Venus. The second part of the Venus table is made up of calendric progressions made up of 65 Venus rounds, each broken up into subperiods marking first morning visibility, last morning visibility, first evening visibility, and last evening visibility. We always knew these numbers were meant to represent Venus, but they were classically thought of as numerology. But a new paper in the Journal of Astronomy and Culture shows that the Maya knew a lot more about astronomy than we give them credit for. We used to make three corrections to the table in order to have it line up with Venus's actual synodic period. But that same study shows similar numbers were recorded in Honduras and by Copernicus, 500 years later. Turns out we only needed to make one correction if we just read one of the words differently. The paper shows that, yes, while there was significant numerology, they used the motion of Venus to dictate their rituals. It was an achievement of Mayan science, not just a numerological oddity. Pages 51 to 73 contain the conjunction of Mercury and Venus. 
They include a table of Mars and possibly one of Jupiter. They also include something called the Serpent Series, multiple tables of huge numbers recording intervals between major astronomical events like solar and lunar eclipses, and along with everything else we talked about, measurements of Saturn's orbit. And all this was tied into the stories of the gods. The rest of the codex tells us the location of the rain god on particular dates. And just like the almanacs, it shows when an appearance of the rain god would be good or when it would be bad. Page 74, the one that we haven't covered yet, is the only page that contains a single picture. Under the glyphs, the image depicts floods of water downpouring from the mouth of a crocodile-headed celestial dragon. An old goddess with claws pours water out of a jar. She is most likely the moon goddess, Goddess O. Her headdress is a snake. At the bottom is a god painted black, holding two darts. He's hard to identify, but possibly he's God L, whose headdress is a bird. And there you go, that's pretty much the entire Dresden Codex. Some of it is still untranslated, and there's really not much we can do about that. I thought the Dresden Codex would be important to cover since the new paper came out, that I will in fact link in the description, that shows that the Mayans knew way more about Venus than we thought they did. But also, I was really surprised to find out that there was no place on the internet where you can find what every single page is about. You can find bits and pieces here and there, but there's no one comprehensive list. So thanks for watching. Be sure to check us out on Facebook and Twitter, and if you like the content, be sure to subscribe. The universe is ours to explore. We'll see you next time. Yeah, it's just as you assume, and it's nothing but these humans mm -hmm. would like to blame mythology for everything they're doing. They pray for non existent gods to clean up the mess, but never take responsibility, just claim it's a test. See that religion you've been given is shit, and it's all poison. And it's partially the reason we bleed, and it's all poison. Though your worldview is poison, and your outlook is poison. Denied all you want, but the truth is it's all poison.